gross human rights violations perpetrated by Flakplas. But there are other apartheid practices that did even more damage to generations of our people that cannot be narrowly defined as individual human rights violations. Practices such as the pass laws and the hostel system. Hostels have been called fortresses of fear. Hostels with mostly primitive buildings housing single black males who work in the cities while their families remained in the rural areas. The story of hostels in South Africa is a story of bloodshed and division. It was a brutal and chaotic war that lasted for nearly five years, and many of its battles were fought in and around the hostel compounds of the South African townships. Many people have told the Truth Commission about the terror associated with these fortresses and their inhabitants. When they were in the middle of Kumalo Street, a group of men accosted them. They were Inkata men. They stopped them and they took out guns and they said they should drive into the hostel. They pulled this, this child by the foot and they hit the child against the wall and she cracked her skull. After I've seen these people, I suspected that those were the people who might have killed my brother. They were not alone, they were with some other people from another section at Vusmuzi. It was an Inkata section. Hostel dwellers became feared and hated. But the uneasy relationship between them and the township communities has existed since the first hostel was built. Since the discovery of diamonds in the 1800s, black men have traveled from the rural areas to industries in the north. The diamond field owners erected the first hostels for these workers to ensure a continuous, controlled and cheap labor force. Black men could only stay in the so-called white areas as long as they were employed by whites and they would stay without their families. It was an idea that would become intrinsic in the grand apartheid design. Hostels were soon built in the townships as other industries' demand for labor increased. A community within a community was created the hostel residents were seen by the township residents as outsiders. They were different. They're migrant laborers because they need to work in the cities, but they want to live in rural areas. Their culture is very much a rural culture, and they'll go back to the rural areas as often as they can. They would be resistant to owning a house, for example, in, in an urban area. They would be resistant to allowing their children to come to school in, a rural, in an urban area. And so, in many ways, although they're in an urban area, they're living in, in, in a rural mindset. And their presence was not necessarily tolerated. We, we don't want those how pagans many, here. They are barbarians and pagans. Yeah. We can't have those Zulus here. We even suspect they are missionaries, those people. Yeah, they are missionaries. Schools have, we are teachers, let me tell you, we are teachers. But it was not mistrust that started a war in which thousands would die. The release of Nelson Mandela and the unbanning of the ANC in 1990 threw the political playing field open for the first time in South African history. As you know, that once you talk politics before and then you would be locked up. But everybody was able to talk politics at that time, freely. <laughs> you see? Criticizing freely. That's where it started. The, 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 they don't have what we call uh, uh, politi uh, political tolerance, uh, you know, because they have never been in that situation before. It seemed easy to call it a political war and to identify the aggressors. Fingers were pointed at the Nationalist Party government, the security forces and at Inkata. If we look at what happened in the, in the hostels, they became, a lot of them became dominated by the IFP. And they became identified as IFP hostels. There were, of course, other hostels that were not dominated by the IFP. Uh, but those that were, were seen by township communities as aggressors. It is perpetrated, we believe, by forces that are against uh, the talks about peace. Uh, the violence is 
particularly connected with Ingata. And people are saying that openly. We need to see township violence as part of a broader strategy by the apartheid government. And I think that evidence has, has come to, to the fore over several years of the existence of a third force, which was something that operated as a relationship between the security forces and the Encarta Freedom Party. This relationship between the hostels and a third force was often spoken of in the same breath as taxi wars and train violence. Hostel dwellers are, are amongst the poorest and most isolated of, of urban communities. And this obviously provided a fertile ground for sowing any seeds of division uh, and hatred that were necessary for township war. It was a war fueled by political self-interest, mistrust, suspicion, cultural diversity and a competition for resources. Nobody won as their loved ones became casualties in battle. It may be over, but all the problems have not necessarily been solved. There was still a war between them and us. Mm, there's no reconciliation in fact yet, but I hope there will be a next time. Mm. People do not have energy of fighting daily. You can't have that energy. Fighting is not a sweet thing, you know. It's not the, it's not power, you know, because we lose friends, we lose families, we lose everything.